What's up data pipeliners? In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at pandas profiling. The pandas profiling module is one of my favorite Python packages that exists for helping to assist data exploration. It produces some beautiful HTML outputs that you can use to very quickly and easily assess the state of your data. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can use pandas profiling from the command line as well as from notebooks and then how you can write a data set to add to your Kedro pipeline. Let's go ahead and take a look. The data set that we're going to be looking at today is going to be the Titanic data set. This comes from the manifest of the survivors of the Titanic. Uh, it's a very simple data set one you can find uh, on GitHub. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install pandas profiling. So all you have to do is type in pip install pandas profiling. This will go through, grab from the Python package index, the pandas profiling package. And what happens is once you finish installing the pandas profile package, you then have a command line option that's available. So now I can just type in pandas profiling and this gives me the command line use. And so right away, we can just apply pandas profiling directly to the data set in question. So let's go ahead and try that out. If I go into the data slash 01, I can type in pandas profiling and I just type in the input CSV. So this is the titanic.csv. It starts to go through and actually calculate and summarize the data set for us. And once the HTML is rendered, we can open that HTML file up and it's going to be located in the same directory as our input data. Now opening up the HTML file, we can see the beautiful report that pandas profiling outputs. It gives a great summary of all the data that is inside of that CSV file. And so when we scroll down here under variables, you can see all of the different columns that were there, there inside of the data set and it has identified each of the columns. So for example, the passenger ID, it knows these are real numbers. For those who survived, it can identify that it's a Boolean and it can even identify these categorical classes. This is one of my favorite pieces of software for giving a, a very quick handle on the data itself. And not only does it give you the column data and not only does it give you the summary data, it even gives you the correlation. So you can actually come to this portion over here to show uh, the different correlations between the different columns. And so for example here, the amount of fare is directly correlated with the class. So of course, you're going to have a more expensive fare for a, a higher class on the ship, as well as gives you missing values and then of course your sample values. Uh, it, it's really just such an easy way to get a quick handle on your piece of data that you're working on. Mm -hmm. Now, not only does the pandas profiling module support the command line interface, you can even use it inside of your Jupyter Notebooks. I have here a Jupyter Notebook with our Titanic project. Inside this project, I'm going to go ahead and load the Titanic data frame, which is inside of my catalog as Titanic. And here we can see the Titanic data. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the profile report class from pandas profiling. Now the profile report takes a few options, but the first one that we're most interested in is the data frame itself. So we can just pass our data frame right in and now we get the profile report. Now what we can do is we can call the dot to widget function on the report. This will begin the summarization process. And here they are. The report is available inside of our Jupyter Notebook. If you're working with other colleagues, or if you want to keep track of your data summary somewhere close to your data analysis, then you can use the pandas profiling very, very easily and simply. So this means that if you want to keep track of your data set summary, you can use pandas profiling inside of your Jupyter Notebook to keep it close to your data analysis. And in fact, this can also generate reports on the output of whatever analyses that you create. So you can see how the pandas profiling is really useful, not only for getting a handle on your original data set, but for tracking some of the changes that happen to that data set as you do your analysis. 
And so as you can see, everything is here and available to you. With the same headers that were available inside of the HTML file, you have all of that inside of your Jupyter Notebook in these little tabs. Now something that I like to do is I like to actually use the pandas profiling as an output data set inside of my Kedro pipeline. This makes it easier to keep track of the data that's going through the pipeline and to keep tabs on the shape of the data itself inside of the pipeline. So let me just show you really quickly how you two can also write a pandas profiling data set for use. Now opening up iTerm, I have here Titanic project, which is the project that we're using for this Ketro Jupyter Notebook. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create an IO inside of our Titanic directory. And inside of this io.py is where we're gonna write our profiling code. First, we're gonna to wanna to import from Ketro IO the abstract data set that we're gonna be overriding. And then from Pandas Profiling, we import the profile report. Now we just define the data set. My intention for this data set is to just have an HTML file output and have no input meaning that this is going to be a write-only data set. So you won't be able to load the HTML file as a profile report object, but you'll be able to save a data frame into this data set to output the HTML profile report. Let me grab data set error as well. And then we'll generate our save function. The save function is going to create a new profile report object, pass in the data frame, and then save it to the path that we specify. Now something else that I think would be useful is if we have other save args here. With these save args, it makes it easy for us to customize anything that we need to on the profile report object. And then finally, we just add our describe method. Something I forgot to add here is the self to the save. And the function we actually want to use is not to HTML, it's to file. Coming back to our notebook, let's go ahead and import our new data set, create a new instance of it, and pass in the file path that we want to use. Finally, let's save our data set, and there it goes, and it works just fine. Now while that's running, I just want to point out that because we added that extra save args parameter, we can pass in any other parameters that we would like to use with profile report. Say for example, if we want to turn on experimentation mode, we can go ahead and enable that with true very quickly. So you can start to see how adding the save args argument to your data sets can make it very useful. And so you can continue on from here, adding the data set to your catalog and then adding that catalog entry to your pipeline as almost offshoots of your pipeline to keep getting access to your report data. And of course, you can also combine it with something like Ketro Wings to make it very easy to add those profiling data sets directly to your pipeline without having to modify your catalog. Now that the file is done, let's go ahead and take a look. So we saved it to the local directory, test.html. Here it is. We have our overview, our variables, et cetera, et cetera. And that does it for today's episode. Thank you for joining me. And if you enjoy this content, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.